What's up YouTube, Dale here from Zephyr War Games, and today I am bringing an update to pretty much pure Dino Morpheus. Now this deck got of course some crazy new support, it also got an indirect support in the form of Psychic and Punisher, and I'll explain this when we get to it towards the end of the video. I'm also going to show you a very basic one card combo that the deck can now play, um, thanks to the introduction of Rexterm, and of course to uh, Frenzy, which is just two insanely powerful good cards. With all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content. I'm going to take you through the entire profile and explain each card as I go and why we play it at the particular ratios. So, we start off with, of course, the main Dynamorphia card, and that is Phoresia. The reason Phoresia is so important and is the one you want to max out on is if it is normal or special, you get to set a Dynamorphia trap directly from the deck. So this gives you straight into Domain, it also gets you straight into your Frenzy, and Frenzy is that important, you don't mind going for a second copy or anything like that because it's such a good card. The only downside of, uh, of it is the fact that it's during your opponent's main phase um, rather than just in any main phase at all. I'm only playing the one Diplos. Now, the reason I'm only playing one Diplos is for the pure fact that, yes, you've got technically in this build, you've got five fusions, uh, fusion traps that are going to need to be using the Dynamorphus from the deck. I personally don't really want to rely on Domain. I don't want to see Diplos in my hand at all, which is why I've cut it from three to one. Um, I'm still testing out the ratios. You've got to be very careful because obviously, like I said, Domain uses the materials from the deck and then Frenzy uses one from the main deck and one from... Uh, the extra deck. So you're probably going to normal summon one or two freezes, meaning you've only got two more Dynamorphies in the main deck, um, which kind of limits the plays. But the idea is once you've got Rextrum on board, you should be winning the game from that point on. I then play in place of the Diplosses um, a very small Dino package. We've got the one UCT, the one Arcosaur, and then of course the one Miscellaneous. I'm just going to put two Fossil Digs here as well and the one double Evo Peel because this thing becomes what you want them to be. Now I'm basically using Fossil Digs because the biggest weakness of this entire deck, as soon as your opponent knows that you're playing it, they're going to hold their ashes, if they can, for your frenzies and your domains. More so your frenzies and your domains, but you're still paying half your life points for either of them as cost. And if your opponent ashes you, you just sit there and cry quietly. Um, so, the reason I've gone with this is the fossil dig is ideally going to get me to a miscellaneous. If I don't need, um, if I don't have a Dynamorphia Freezer, then this is going to get me to that as well. You only ideally want a normal something in this, um, but the idea would be that if you've got a combination of Freezer plus any of these, you activate this, you search out your misc, they then know that whatever you play, you're going to protect it. So you kind of want a, a normal something in the Freezer, and then you're basically saying Freezer's effect, Imperm or Veiling me because you can't Ash me, and then I'm going to activate Miscellaneous to protect it anyway. So you try to pull out a hand trap from it, and then you activate the misc. If you're going second, of course, Misk is then incredibly powerful. It can still do the same thing going first because you don't need to keep your Dynamorphias on the board. So the idea was like going first, you protect, you put it to the graveyard, you banish it, you summon out your Arcosaur. Arcosaur then just destroys a monster, so it can be a hand trap, which is quite important because then that will set you up the pill. Even if it doesn't destroy, uh, if you have to destroy another dinosaur or anything like that, you can still turn this into Link Karibo, you can still use your pill and you're good to rock from there. You've also then got the ability, if you wanted to, to go into a Link 2. Or kind of move your place further forward that way as well. It's entirely up to you, but the idea that I kind of saw this was, was going first, I can end my board on a UCT with the ability of a Rextrum, which is going to cause it even more issues. But then going second, I also have a follow-up from one card, and I've got a built-in protection. It is, in theory, if you wanted to take these out, a six-card engine. So that's six cards that can then become anything you want. They can become additional hand traps, they can become trap tricks if you want them to be. Um, they could also become a very small branded engine, which I quite advise as well. So I did a Dynamorphia branded uh, profile the other day, and what works really, really well about that is there's so many power play cards that your opponent's like, oh, I need to ash this, I need to ash this, that unless they open up two ashes, you're pretty much trying to guarantee frenzy where at all possible. Uh, the last two monsters that aren't hand traps is two Lord of Heavenly Prison. Now this is mainly... It's quite specific in, in certain matchups because I don't think you're going to need to worry about Twin Swisters. I don't think you're going to need to worry about Dusters or Lightning Storms rarely um, going first. Like game one, I don't think you need to worry about it. So this is just going to be a protector. It, it doesn't protect your stuff from being Ash. It doesn't protect them from being stopped once they're faced up. So it really just protects you from like a Guardian Chimera um, and, and stuff like that. So it's more so going second and your opponent's got the ability to go Brandon Red Chimera, where you can kind of reveal Lord of Heavenly Prisons in the hand, set your cards, and then you know they're protected. Uh, and then all you need to worry about is either an Omni Negate to stop a Frenzy or like an Ash Blossom or something like that. 
Uh, then moving on to the hand traps now. We play a stupid amount of hand traps. So we've got the ghost bells, got the ashes, got the ghost ogres, got the veilers, and then got the imperms. Now, the reason we've got so many hand traps is because we've got the space to do so, we're then going to use the ability of abusing cross out. Now, in a defensive option, the cards that really stop your plays, if you don't open up a frenzy, are going to be veilers um, and imperms. If you do open up frenzy or anything like that, you need to stop the ashes. I cannot highlight how important it is. You're paying half your life points. Now, 9 out of 10, your half life points is possibly going to be 4,000 life points and more times than not. You need to protect that from being ashed. If they drop the ash, you drop the crosses out, doesn't it? You're good to roll. Obviously, cross out will then, if you were to swap this for a branded engine, give you even more options. But you've also got to try and play around Super Poly. Like, this is the worst. I really wish the Dynamorphia's with Earth. I really do, because then you could play this with confidence without need to worry about Super Poly. Rexstrom is such a pain in the ass to deal with um, that they do need, the only way they can out it is Super Poly. So that's when you need to be quite protective around it. Obviously, to deal with other hand drives where you've got the call by the grave. Um, but keep in mind, don't take anything away from the cross out designator. Um, it can also, I believe, Bell can also affect um, Kentagena if you went that route, and I'll show you that in the combo. But you basically want to be trying to protect your wrecks from Veilers, Imperms, you name it. You're trying to protect your plays, which is why you're playing this much of an engine. If you feel that your locals is more Nibiru oriented or your opponent your opponent's going to be playing a particular type of hand trap that you've got in the side or you feel that your locals is a more specific representation of a hand trap, then that's where you can change it and to change these out as you see fit. Um, there's also another reason for Ghost Ogre and the reason for the Ghost Ogre is massive shout out to Gmores on uh, YouTube. So I saw his Dynamorphia profile uh, and I was like, oh, yo, that's a great tech. So um, triple emergency teleport. Now, the reason this is actually really important is because you have the ability of, once you've kind of negated your opponent's board and dealt with it, you can then e-tele during your turn, um, bring out a Ghost Ogre, and then sync the Ghost Ogre with the uh, Rexstrom to go into the Punisher. And we'll talk about Punisher a little bit later on when we get to him, but he's basically just going to become an absolute tower that is unaffected, which is absolutely insane. We've then got Trill Prosperity. Now, you don't have to play Prosperity. Um, you can go a more control route if you want to, and you can go with... I, I still wouldn't recommend Extrav because if you lose your Rextrum, you, you kind of do struggle quite a bit. Um, but you could play stuff like Allures if you bumped up more Dark cards, and that's where you'd probably make it more Dynamorphia using the Structured X stuff because then you can start using the searches off of the back of uh, your Merry Carrier. You can then start using... The branded uh, branded loss, which is really really cool, because it means your opponent could not respond um, to your fusion summon. So once you basically bring out Kentagena, you can activate Kentagena's effect under branded lost, um, banish the trap card, and your opponent can't imperm or veiler as long as you do that on the summon. Uh, and keep in mind as well, you've got turn player priority. So the summon on the summon of Kentagena, on the summon of DPE, on the summon of Rexstrom, activate the effect. Your opponent cannot respond because it's still within the summoning window of branded lost. Uh, moving swiftly into the traps, the brand new card. How is this not a secret? This card looks amazing. This card is amazing. The biggest downside of this particular card is that it reads during your opponent's main phase. Really annoying. Pay half your life points as cost. Fusion sign one Dynamorphia monster from your extra deck using only one monster from the deck and one monster from the extra deck as fusion material. When your opponent activates a card or effect while your life points are 2,000 or less, you get to banish this card from the graveyard and you take no effect damage from your opponent's card effects this turn. So obviously that's going to be really important um, with uh, Sword Soul. But again, I really wish this was more like Sonic, that you just don't take battle damage. Like It needed to be a card that basically said, um, if you would take battle damage, you can banish this card from the graveyard. You take no battle damage from that battle. Now, if all of the traps had that clause, I would be absolutely... like that. That's what they needed, because there's the times when your opponent's like, right, okay, well, I've broken your board. I'm now going to attack you and kill you for game because you've already reduced your life points to like 1,000 or 2,000. And then you just go, okay, cool, banish Frenzy, banish um, Domain, and kind of protect your stuff as you go along. We've then, of course, got double Dynamorphia Domain. So this one is, again, during the main phase, so not just specifically your opponents. Pay half your life points to fusion summon a Dynamorphia monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand, deck, or field as material. When your opponent activates a card or effect while your life points are 2,000 or less, uh, you can banish this from the graveyard. You take no effect damage this turn. So the idea behind this is this one's a little bit more specific. You need to already have a Dynamorphia Fusion on the board in order to make Rextrum. Or you would activate this. It's basically counting as a fifth copy of Frenzy because you would activate this, 
Send two Dynamorphias from the deck to the graveyard. Make Kentagena. Kentagena would use her effect to banish this. And then Kentagena's effect would become this. So you would use herself on the board. And then you'd use a Dynamorphia from the deck to the grave to give you into your extra room. But I don't know at any point, apart from doing this during your main phase, why you would choose to go for this over this, which is why this is a three and this is a two. Then, of course, we've got the one uh, Dynamorphia Sonic. So again, I already mentioned its grave effect. But when your opponent activates a spell or trap card while you control a Dynamorphia monster, pay half your life points and negate the activation if you do destroy that card. Then destroy one Dynamorphia monster you control. During damage calculation, while your life points are 2,000 less, you can banish it and take no battle damage. Then the Crazy Spice. Now this one is actually a shout out to Charlie. He was the first one that showed me this. I love this card. This card's mad. Ferret Flames. It came out in like Core, which I, I believe is like Crossroads or something like that. Uh, it also came out in like Mega Pack 17. So definitely go pick these up if you plan to build this deck. If the combined attack of all face-up monsters your opponent controls is higher than your life points, make your opponent shuffle monsters they control into the deck, their choice, so that the combined attack of all remaining monsters they control uh, become less than or equal to your life points. Now keep in mind, the one card combo straight away can put you down to at least 2,000 attack or 2,000 life points. Off of the back of that, it could go a little bit further and make it 1,000. And you can also then, using the effect of Rexroom, it makes your opponent's monsters attacked equal your life points. So if they're lower, if they're higher, they all get dropped and equaled into that, like, that kind of bracket. So when you activate this, it basically says to your opponent, you can only keep one monster on the board. Now, obviously, it is a bit of a downside because they can keep their strongest monster on the board if they wanted to. Um, so you've really got to think about when you activate it. But it's just so good because it makes them shuffle it back in. Your life points are going to be incredibly low. So even if you don't use the Rextrum effect and you're on 2,000 life points, it then means that they can't keep any of their strong monsters and they all have to go. Then I've got a balance of two Judgment, two Strikes. This should probably be three Judgments and then this will give you the ability to make three Ferret Flames or three Domain if you want to. But the reason we've gone with two and two is because you've also got to keep in mind you don't really want to be Judgment in stuff like Branded Fusion you probably want to strike the fusion summon that comes out of it more than anything. Now, obviously, it's a little bit difficult because your opponent will probably chain block more than not. But what you've got to be careful about judgment is if you judgment a spell card that says you can only activate, you're negating the activation. So if they get to a second Brad of fusion or if they opened up a second one, they're then going to be able to use it again. So it's very, very specific. The issue with these cards, of course, is they are when effects as well. So when your opponent chain blocks, it means you're striking the last thing that happens, which you really don't want to do. Um, obviously, the other downside of this is that Judgment will always be live. You'll always be able to pay half your life points, but you won't always be able to pay 1,500 life points to strike. So it kind of comes down to personal preference. I'm just showing you the options between the two. And it does give you that option to kind of protect yourself from like monster effects everywhere, everywhere rather than just like spells and traps. Now, this is obviously great against evenly matched, but another option you could use is you could play Lost World, give your opponent a token, but I feel that in this current format, like the, the route of plays you're making is not really ideal to get you far. I mean, it's not that bad if you go second or if you wanted to play Overact or something like that to destroy the token, give you a Kentagena. Kentagena sets you the trap and then thank you, you've got a rank for uh, Dolker or Lagia. Um, and then that means you can protect your frenzy plays. So again, I mean, you could put one Overactor in here, but then you then need to play Lost World. So you, you're kind of mess, not messing around, but you, you're experimenting more with the combos and the options you have. So moving on to the extra deck, we'll start off with the Synchros. So again, shout out to Gmores on this one. So we've got the one Dawn Dragster. So this is your first turn play. So this is your Kentadino, your Diplos. Heck, even if you normal summoned your um, Misk, I don't know why you would, but sometimes you might have to. And then E-Telly, you then get yourself a free spell or trap negate. Um, it's not ideal. I would prefer this to be a spell, trap, or monster effect negate because then you're able to protect from Ash Blossom, which is, like I said, the most effective card that will really, really hurt your deck. Um, but it is just something there. It gives you a first turn play because your Psychic End um, Punisher is your second turn play. So this is a brand new secret, definitely worth picking up. I think they're like £10 right now. I would highly advise picking these up. Um, so it's one tuner plus one or more non-tuners. It is a level 11. Um, so that is where, of course, your Rexroom comes into play. And that's also where your... Um, where your Ghost Ogre comes into play because it's quite a nice and easy one to make. Uh, it does then get you into everything you need. But while your life points are less than, than or equal to your opponent's, which 90% 90, 90 of the time it will do, this Synchro Summon card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. Once per turn, you can pay 1,000 life points to target one monster you control and one card your opponent controls. Um, banish them, uh, just banish them in general. 
At the start of the battle phase, you can make this card gain attack equal to the difference in your life points and your opponents. It's already a 3,500 base. Imagine that you've got yourself down to 1,000, your opponent's still on 8,000. You trigger that effect, this is gaining 7,000 attack. It's a 10,500 attack monster, and then you can activate Rexroom to make everything go down. So, absolutely mad. It's crazy good. I love the idea behind it. It is a very good power play. It is an alternative option to, of course, UCT, which you might argue you don't need both. Um, so that's something you can look into and adapt as you see fit. Pretty standard following from here. So you've got your Laggy and your Dolka. Uh, and then you've got two of your Stealth Burger. <laughs> Burger. Burger. Um, I'm going with two of that. Two Kentagena and two Rexroom. Again, Rexroom could have very easily been a secret. Like The card's mad good. So Kenti Gina is actually a little bit more relevant now because it's so much easier to burn your life points down. If you wanted to, your board could be Kenti Gina and a Rexroom all from one card. Uh, the only issue about that is, again, you're putting two darks on the board and with Super Poly running rampant right now, um, it's very difficult for this deck to deal with, which is why I would also highly advise what this deck could actually do really well with is Sanctums and Scythes. And then even if that doesn't survive the balance, definitely Anti-Spells. Because you can anti-spell when you've only got one dark on the board. And it's near impossible for your opponent to go draw phase, activate uh, Super Poly. So, uh, Kentagena requires two Dynamorphia monsters with different names. And you lose attack equal to your life points. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Keep in mind that by the time you fusion this out, you've already paid 4,000 life points. So she's going to be on zero at this moment in time. You can then trigger to use her effect during the main phase as a quick effect to pay half your life points to banish a Dynamorphia normal trap from the graveyard and its effect becomes this trap card's effect. Um, if this card is destroyed a battle or card effect, you can special on one level four or lower Dynamorphia monster from your graveyard. So the reason Kentagene is so good is the, that the, the fact that you go Domain or Frenzy. Frenzy is probably going to be a little bit easier, but you can go um, Frenzy will give you the two, Domain will give you the one. So you'd go Frenzy, you go into Kentagena, you're down to 4,000 life points. You activate Kentagena's effect, you pay 2,000 life points, you banish the Frenzy, you use the effect again, which is why most of these are doubles. You could play them at freeze if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter. So you send a second Dynamorphia from the deck, you send one from the extra deck, you summon out a Rextrum. So you've got 2,000 life points left, you've got a Rextrum, you've got a Kentagena. Your Rextrum then has the quick effect to put your life points down to 1,000 at that point, and then it means all of your opponent's monsters on the field cannot activate their effects if they are an attack of 1,000 or more. Very, very important um, because then that can really, really hurt your opponent. I mean, basically, I'll walk in talking skill drain, uh, but in the Dynamorphia matchup, it can be a little bit tricky if they have got into Super Poly. Uh, Rextrum still has additional effects as well. So you, um, you can only use the following effect once per turn by paying half your life points. And then the best thing about this as well is until the, um, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special on a level six or lower Dynamorphia from your graveyard. So that's how you can start looping back Kentagena. Um, but again, like I said, once you've locked your opponent down, controlled their board, if they haven't scooped already, this plus an e telly gives you into this, and that's a 10,000 boss monster right there. And then Kentagena is going to be on like 3,000 life points by the time you get to, uh, 3,000 attack points, sorry, by the time you get to here. Moving into links, we've got the one link Karibo for that Arcasaur play. Uh, and this can actually be really important. Like the fact that you could leave weaker monsters on the board, you sometimes do need to trigger this off in order to um, reduce that attack to zero, and then it will protect your board a little bit as well. We've then got Dark the Dark Charmer alongside Halley Firebrax again, Celine and uh, Axe Code, all pretty straightforward and standard in my opinion. Unless you're adapting to building a different route, um, this kind of all makes sense. So the idea of Dark is that all your Dynamorphies are Dark. You're ideally going to make this. This can then revive a DPE. You can then link off and go higher if you want to. Um, but the more common card you're probably going to go into is your Halley Firebrax because this, so Dynamorphia plus e -Telly, if you don't want to go for your Dawn Drags, you can go to Halley Firebrax if you're going second. Uh, Halley Firebrax can then special summon out your um, Effect Veiler, and then you can go to Selene, and then Selene can go into Access Code. Keep in mind as well, that's obviously where um, Fossil Dig comes into play. You're not playing a huge amount of spells, but like e uh, Prosperity into e -Telly, and then e -Telly into like a Fossil, uh, Fossil Dig, straight away gives you your free spells for your... Um, Celine, and that's going to give you an access code, which is going to be a 5300 access code. Banish, pop, banish, pop. Um, by that time, you're definitely going to have two, uh, and then kind of go from there. Okay, so that is it for the profile, guys. Um, I hope this is giving you a couple of ideas. Like I said, massive shout out to Gmores, massive shout out to Charlie. He's the one that's been putting this deck together. It's kind of like when he showed me a proxy of Rexron, I was like, holy crap, that does that. Um, but yeah, like the new cards are absolutely nuts. I can't believe that Ultra is definitely worth picking them up. Like each of them are like seven to ten pounds per copy. Even the Pharisees have started to come down in price a little bit as well, which is really cool. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom this out a little bit so you see more of a map and obviously the darted cards everywhere. But I'm going to quickly show you basically the one card combo. So the one card combo can be any of the following. So Faresia is the main one that you would normally summon. The Fossil Dig is obviously a, re, uh, a way into Faresia. The strongest one, well, I say it's the strongest one. Your the Frenzy and the Freezer would still lose to the same hand traps, so that's why you need to protect it. So we'll go the, the longest route possible to show you what you need. But you could go Fossil Dig, search out Freezer, normal Freezer, set the Frenzy. Pass your opponent's turn during their main phase. Frenzy, pay half your life points. So you're paying four thousand. You're going down to um, four thousand life points. You then use the effect. So send from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, I would probably send the Diplos. So you send that, and then you're going to send from your extra. Doesn't matter which one you send. You can send a Kentagene. You can send a Steph. Uh, stealth is entirely up to you. I use a Stealth. This then lets me fuse into a Dynamorphia. Now you can go straight to a Rexstrom, but you're going to be on four thousand life points. Your opponent's going to be on um, eight thousand. So you're not really restricting them. This is where it gets a little bit better. Is you can go Kentagena effect, banish the Frenzy. Uh, this effect now becomes Frenzy, so you send another monster from your extra deck, so it can be the second Kentagena, it can be a set in stealth, doesn't really matter. It could be even a second Rectrum, I believe. So then you go, you'd also then send the Freezer. Where are you? Da 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 da. There you go. Freezer goes from the deck to the graveyard, and then this is your board. So you're on 2,000 life points. You've got the ability of activating Rextrum to pay a thousand life points to put you down to a thousand. Your opponent's monsters attack all equal to a thousand, uh, and then they can't activate the effects on the field of cards of that level. Now, obviously, keep in mind that throughout this stage, you've paid seven thousand life points. It's a very risky deck to be playing in a game that is leading to time. It's a very risky deck to be playing going into game three, and it's also a very risky deck without protection. And what I mean by that is straight away you can see all of these paths. Now, each of these will eat hand traps if you then have follow-up. So if you've got Domain, that's where you can then go, okay, well, Kentagena eats, um, goes to eat a Imperm or a Veiler, Chain Domain, use this to make a second Rex room. You can kind of see where we're going with that point. You can then, ideally, what you'd want to do is something like that happens, you probably want to try and get into um, your Stealth. And that's when, if you've opened up Frenzy and Domain, your first one, you probably want to get to Stealth um, because once you get to 2,000 life points, that's when you want to start making sure you're not having to pay for uh, card effects. So that's where it gets really important. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So like I said, this stage, Imperm Veiler, not worried about Ash. This stage, Imperm Veiler, Ash, not to mention that you should probably be Ash in this anyway. Um, and then this stage is Imperm and Veiler. So you, you do kind of have to be very careful and play around it, which is why I play Cross Out and all of those targets. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, if you do have any questions, by all means, please put them in the comments down below. Uh, I think this deck is really kind of cool. Um, I'm not too sure how meta-relevant or hugely effective it can be, but I definitely feel that I'm going to have a bit of fun with it. Um, and you need to... It's probably better off playing it casual so you can trust the local environment, I suppose. But yes, really enjoyable. I, I can't wait to see if they get more support. I would love to get another main deck monster. That would be really kind of cool. I think they've kind of hit where they need to be with the extra decks. Like They can get like a negate. But I still feel the free extra deck monsters that they've got are pretty cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As absolutely always, guys, stay safe. And of course, happy dueling.